Anthony at the end of last episode was having a temper tantrum, so we joined him at the beginning of this episode. I just want your family to be on my side. I want your family to, to defend me the way they defend you. Sir, where's your family? Where's your family? Where's your family, sir? Because to me, it sounds like you wanted her family to back you up in doing something selfish. That's what it felt like for me. That's what it felt like for me. You wanted them to co-sign bullshit. That's what most men, like a lot of y'all love that. Y'all are delusional. Y'all love for people to co-sign your delusions and your bullshit. And when they don't, you have a temper tantrum like a six-year-old. Oh, once we got to this episode, I can see Latoya wasn't as moved as I thought she was initially. It was giving, oh, but you know what? I'm so glad you're letting this out because I knew you resented me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I knew. I didn't resent you. I was just hurt. I didn't resent you. Sir, you don't know emotions. You don't know feelings. And that's obvious. So when she tells you you resented her, please just take up in word for it. I'm just hurt. I'm just hurt. They still have some things to work on, apparently. Christina acting flaky with Kobe about this business opportunity to me is clearly, clearly a result of what's going on with her and Brandon, okay? Because Brandon decided as soon as Kobe brought it to her attention that he had another artist she did not know about that he was going to make Kobe an adversary, meaning he was going to start planting seeds. And you've already let us know how you're going to stay with him hella high water. He's going to have to leave you, which is so sad and pathetic. Brandon says this one guy has been rooting for him to get his relevance back because before he was married, he was way more popping in the streets. So he's been trying to get Christina to let go of the reins a bit. Now, y'all, let's talk about that for a second. Why did you just say your friend of 20 years is, I'm sorry, this one guy? This one guy who argues on your behalf every time he's with you and your wife, you really played him to the left. And I want y'all to pay attention the way he manipulates and takes advantage of everybody around him. And as soon as he can separate himself from that person in order to benefit himself, he will do so. You think that y'all have this camaraderie as men, but they're not the type of person that even has that loyalty towards men. They don't have loyalty to anybody. They only have loyalty to themselves. Everything that they do is about themselves. Your friendship with him is not about the fact that he has bonded with you as a man. It is because he can use you. So understand that the way he treats his wife is an extension of who he is. So when he treats you and Russell that way, don't be surprised. Because they both know how terrible he is to Christina. But because the men are okay with the mistreatment of the women, nobody says anything, nobody checks him, and nobody cares. But when he starts to, dis to, to, to distribute this fuck shit behavior to his homeboys, then it's going to become a group problem. And Christina, being the first victim of his abuse, is going to then stick beside him and get the brunt of people's anger about him. She's going to have to receive that. So not only did he get his homeboys to come after you, but now he's going to make adversaries of his friends and then make you stick beside him. So you're going to have to receive the wrath from your homegirls. You're going to have to receive the wrath from his friends. And it's not even really going to be about anything you've done. But simply because he's your husband and you're going to stick beside him. Christina explains that she felt belittled. She felt disrespected. He left saying he was done with his marriage. She told her he was done with the marriage. He says, I'm sure you said some things too automatically as soon as he knows that those counselors are gonna recognize what he said as something that was a, 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 a you know a line he shouldn't have crossed what does he do he can't even take the full responsibility for the shit that he said he has to then say i'm sure you said some things too which is doing what they always do you have to balance out blame you can never just take your lick you can never just receive the fact that you're wrong right now. You have to then also bring her into it. And then she has to clarify, no, what I said was, if you want to leave, then you can leave. That's what she said, which is not the same thing as her telling you that she's done with this marriage as well. And in all honesty, that's what the fuck she should have told you. Like you lost your career. Now you about to lose your friends too, bitch. Okay. If you say it's worth it, I guess it's worth it. He apologizes for only worrying about his agenda. Oh, I love moments like these, y'all. He honestly says exactly what it was. I apologize for worrying about my own agenda, for being selfish. 
But after he gives you that half truth, because that's half of the truth, he's then going to follow it up with what you want to hear. It's another, to me, manipulation, right? Because you say that, and then you say, I never want to get a divorce, and I'll never say that again. And what did she say? I appreciate your honesty. Always so willing to give a nigga a pat on the back for being honest because these niggas lie so much. But what you don't realize is they know that you're going to give them a pat on the back for their blunt honesty. Because most people like to feel like somebody is admitting to the truth when they've known the truth the whole time and you've made them feel insane. Latoya's parents, we didn't see her mom, but they are co-bishops of the church. She has to convince Anthony that his emotional breakdown on a boat means he needs to talk to her father and get his emotions out. So Bishop is up there teaching, okay? You know what the Bishop was up there on that pulpit saying? It's all working out for your good, which is something that is said in my therapy, in my therapy sessions. And it really helped change my mindset around. So when I see preachers that are preaching practical things, things that you should be repeating to people, having them say, I have the best life. All of that positive reinforcement that that man was giving them. All I had to hear was a few words of what he was saying. And I was like, good man. And when he goes outside to talk to Anthony, Anthony says, oh, you did, you, you, you gave a good word, Bishop. And he says, you can only give a good word when you're working with good people. I said, talk about it, Bishop. You can only give a good word when you're working with good people. Because I know so many people that like to act like the religion is good and the people are bad. And I'm like, yeah, but you need to understand that if, if that's the case, then the word is bad too because you can't trust who it's coming from. When Anthony says to her dad, that basically he felt like he was trying to elevate the family by moving to Atlanta and he felt like nobody really understood where he was coming from. The bishop says, and this is what y'all killed it for me. You, you don't have nothing else to say after this. Bishop said, well, my issue came in because little Anthony, his son, was facing challenges at school. He was being singled out, the racism things that was going on. And he said, when I would go and pick him up, the grandfather said when I would go and pick him up from school and he would be crying, that's when I realized that your place should be here because he needs his daddy. And what's most important is that the children are stable. What's most important is that the children are stable. And then he said God works with couples of agreement. So sometimes it's better to wait instead of forcing whatever it is that you want, forcing your will. Anthony says he felt like they called him a deadbeat dad. Nobody said that, but that's what y'all do. Whenever, some, whenever you want to be a victim, instead of taking accountability for what's being said or whatever the situation is, somebody lays it out very, very plain for you. And it makes sense and you understand why they feel that way. But because you want to be a victim so bad, you have to then go to the extreme of, I felt like y'all thought I was a deadbeat dad. Who, who, who felt like you was a deadbeat dad? Or is that something that you created in your mind because you're too immature to be in the middle where these people are? These people are in the middle. And they're in the middle saying, you're not a deadbeat dad, but you did something that was selfish and we needed you to correct it. So we, as the family in the community, we're going to hold you accountable and all impress upon you how it was important for you to be there for your family and not just go and take a job in Atlanta because you thought it was better for you. 